Welcome to Thailand News Today, middle of the week. should start with a very quick apology for the look of my eyes yesterday. Didn't realise how bad my allergies were until I actually saw it on video. It was too late by then, so sorry for all the shock and horror having to look at those uh, shocking eyes. Anyway, much better today. Some good days and some bad days. Let's get started with the news. Struggling Thai Airways is petitioning three countries to try and avoid their planes being seized when they eventually get back into the air. The Cabinet was informed about the filing of debt rehabilitation requests in foreign countries by the Deputy PM Wissanu Kriyanam, who chairs the committee tasked with coordinating a solution to the airline's problems. The airlines petitioned courts in Switzerland, Germany and Japan and submitted a similar request in the US where creditors are based. The petitions, if approved, will protect the company against its aircraft being impounded overseas when the airline takes to the international skies, probably in August. A ban on international flights remains in force until at least the end of June and Thai have announced their schedule, if everything goes to plan, for flights resuming in August. The Thai Constitution Protection Association is asking the government why they need to get access to the public phone use during COVID-19. Officials are claiming it would only be used to prevent any resurgence of the COVID-19 virus but the association plans to file a petition with the National Human Rights Commission today, calling for the Ministry of Defence and the Disease Control Department to be investigated. They say the government's actions are a violation of citizens' freedoms, rights and human dignity, which are protected under the Thai constitution. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Defence says it was only looking into the possibility of using the data to maintain the seemingly successful suppression of COVID-19 in Thailand. Disposable face masks and plastic gloves are now ending up in the oceans around the world. The new type of environmental waste has been called COVID waste. Conservationists and non-profits in Europe and Asia worry that the items used to protect those on land from the coronavirus are now threatening life underwater. The Operation Me Prop posted a video on Facebook yesterday showing the COVID trash, mostly face masks and plastic gloves, strewn around the ocean floor. They warn that the number of masks in the Mediterranean could be potentially more than the number of jellyfish. And Oceans Asia in Hong Kong also reports a surge of face masks washing up onto the shore. They say that masks even showed up on the beaches on Hong Kong's uninhabited islands, with one 100 metre beach in the middle of nowhere having 70 masks wash up on the shore. Three students have been shuffled off to a Bangkok police station after tying big white bows around the Democracy Monument yesterday on Ratana Kosin Island. The students called on the Thailand and Cambodian governments to address the abduction of an exiled Thai political activist. The students were charged for violating the Road Traffic Act by tying the bows. There were hundreds of other white bows appearing around the capital yesterday. Meanwhile, many Thai celebrities are taking to social media to protest the alleged abduction. Model and beauty queen Maureen Lynn Aaron spoke up about the missing man who went missing in Phnom Penh last Thursday. She wrote that Thailand has been ruled through fear for as long as she can remember. On Monday this week, around 30 activists gathered outside the Cambodian embassy in Bangkok, calling on the Cambodian government to help find the missing activist. They were met by an embassy representative who assured them their message would be passed on to Cambodian PM Hun Sen. The Cambodian police announced yesterday they will be investigating the 37-year-old's disappearance. And Thailand's deputy army chief is proposing that there could be a trial lifting of the curfew that currently runs from 11pm to 3am. He didn't give any specific trial dates and spoke in advance of meetings to discuss the anticipated phase four of the lifting of restrictions. He stressed that the trial period would be used to see how the situation progressed and monitor the overall state of affairs. A ban on gatherings, including political gatherings, was also proposed to be removed. 
He also mentioned that decisions on the emergency decree overall will take place next week. At this stage, the emergency decree is due to be lifted at the end of June, although there have been murmurings that it may be extended again. That's the main stories from around Thailand today. If you want to catch up with any specifics or more details, indeed more stories, you can go to thetiger.com. It's in English and Thai, and we're busy pumping out stories all day, every day, seven days a week. In the meantime, thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Flash Thursdays is Thailand's very first fully online property sale event. Fazwas.com has brought together the largest range of new developments in Thailand's most popular markets. With limited stock and exclusive prices and huge discounts, you don't want to miss out. It's simple. Sit in the comfort of your own home on June 18th and all day long we will bring you the best discounts available. Secure the unit you want by paying the reservation fee online using your credit card. And if you don't purchase, we'll issue you a full refund. It's free to join, so register today.